All right, we are up to our last section for Chapter 4, 4.6. And I think the way your book, we ran them off for you. We've had this side first, but I really want to talk about this side first. So make sure you're on this side if you're taking the notes. All right, notice these triangles have what looks to be like a side, side, angle pattern. They both have a side that's four. They both have a side that's five. So we have these two sides congruent. We have these two sides congruent. And we have an angle that's not included between the sides. So it looks like we have a side-side angle. But you can tell by looking at these pictures that they are not congruent, which is why we can't use side-side angle. Don't use side-side angle. Notice I've kind of already said you don't use ASS. I'm writing this in such a way that we don't spell anything we shouldn't. But that's why we don't have side side angle. It doesn't work to make congruent triangles, except in the case of right triangles. And that's the only time it's going to work, but because it's a right triangle, we have some special things happening. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So this is your hypotenuse for a right triangle. Most of you know that. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So here's my right angle. The side across from it is the hypotenuse, the longest side. The other two sides are referred to as legs. And those are the two sides that form the right angle. So here's one leg, here's one leg. They come together to make that included angle be a right angle. All right, here's our conditional statement. If, go ahead and pause the video maybe to copy this down. If the hypotenuse and one leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and one leg of another triangle. So I have two right triangles here. See my right angles. I have right triangles. If the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle, here's my hypotenuse, here's my leg are congruent to the hypotenuse in one leg of another right triangle. Here's my hypotenuse congruent to this hypotenuse, both of them, and another leg. There's my double marks, so those legs are congruent. That's enough to say then the triangles are congruent by what we're going to call the HL theorem for hypotenuse leg. This, by the way, makes our reason number five. Remember, we've been talking about there's five reasons that triangles can be congruent. So our five reasons, now that we have all of them in place, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and now we're going to add our fifth reason, which is HL. Realize this is the one, this HL, because it's a hypotenuse and leg, it only works in a right triangle. The rest of these can work in any kind of triangle. So looking at our two triangles here, PQ is this leg. It's congruent to YZ, which is the other leg. PR, which is the hypotenuse, is congruent to XZ, which is the other hypotenuse. Because I have right triangles, it just takes the hypotenuse and one pair of legs, and I can say the triangles are congruent by HL. So let's name them. If I said triangle PQR, again, remember, order matters. You have to match up the corresponding parts. So PQR, if I start at P and go to Q and end at R, what angle matches up with P in the second triangle? Well, P is between the hypotenuse and the leg that I have, so it must be Z matches up. So Z, I go from Z, P to Q, which is my right angle, so I'm going to have to go from Z to Y. 
and then I end at R, so now I'm going to have to end at X. P, Q, R matches with Z, Y, X. All right, let's look at a couple examples to see. They want you to determine if each pair of triangles are congruent by the HL. So yes or no. If not, what additional information would you need to make them congruent? So if they are, great, you can just say congruent by HL. But if not, there must be some additional information that we need. So if we look at this first set, are these congruent by HL? Well, it looks like, even though this is not a good picture because the hypotenuse is supposed to be the longest side, so I'm going to let you take a little liberty here. Typically, you don't get to change numbers, but this was inputted wrong, so we're going to do a little doctoring. Let's make the hypotenuses both 10 and these legs both 6. Because remember we said the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So this picture wouldn't make sense if not. I have right triangles. That's the first thing you need to look at. If you're going to use HL, you better have a right triangle. So I do have right triangles. The hypotenuses are both 10. So that works as far as them being congruent. And I have a pair of legs that are both six. So yes, these are congruent by HL. What I want you to also practice on your homework with is naming them. So if we said triangle ABC is congruent, ABC would have to match up with A to B to C would have to match up with F to E to D. A past the E past the right angle matches up with F matches goes past the 6 past the right angle. All right, the second are is there enough to say these two triangles are congruent by HL? Well again, remember the first thing I said is if you're going to check this you have to make sure you have right triangles. Do I have right triangles? Not that I can tell. These are not marked as right angles. They may look like they're right angles, but we can't go by how things look. So what would we need? We would need angle T and angle Q to be right angles. And if I don't know that, I can't say that they are congruent by HL. All right, the third one. We have right angles here. So it looks like we're going to have right triangles if we cut this rectangle in half. Do we have hypotenuses congruent and do we have a pair of legs congruent? Well, this side makes up part of the right angle and this side makes up this right angle. So I have legs congruent. The question is, do I have hypotenuses congruent? Well, these two triangles share this side, and it just so happens this side, which is the diagonal, is across from this right angle, so it's a hypotenuse, across from this right angle, so it's a hypotenuse, and we know something is always congruent to itself. So yes, we would say this is congruent by HL. Let's name it. Triangle K, E, W, K, E, W. Notice I'm starting at my right angle, so I have to start at the right angle here. L. Now careful, K, E, W is going to match up with L, W, E, because I'm going past the legs that are congruent. So L, W, E. And our last one. Are these two triangles congruent by HL? Well, we have right angles. Our vertical angles here are right angles. This is a leg. This is a leg that forms that right angle. What I'm missing is the hypotenuses. This is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. This is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. We don't know that. So we would need to know that AX and is congruent to CZ. That's what we need to know. That's what's missing. The hypotenuses would need to be congruent, and we don't know that. All right, let's look at another idea of what we can do here. We haven't done much with this in this chapter, or lately. 
but this is a big part combining some of your algebra skills with some geometry concepts. Find the values of x and y that make the triangles congruent by hl. We do have right triangles and if we want the triangles to be congruent by hl that's saying that we want the hypotenuses to be congruent so that means 3y is going to have to equal x plus 3. That's a problem solving because I have a y and an x, but let's keep moving. That means I also want the legs congruent. So that means this x is going to have to be congruent to y plus 1. This is the legs congruent. This is getting, this is setting the hypotenuses. I'm just going to put hypo congruent. Again, I'm having a little trouble solving both of these because they both have an x and a y. But if x is equal to y plus 1, one of the properties we talked about was substitution. I can take x out of this equation and replace it with y plus 1 because they are equal to each other. x is the same thing as equal to y plus 1, so I can take x out and replace it. So that means 3y is going to equal y plus 1 plus 3. If I solve, I'm going to have 3y equals y plus 4. When I subtract a y, I get 2y equals 4, which means y is equal to 2. All right, that got me one of my variables. Now, how do I find x? Well, here I know what y is equal to. It's equal to 2. So that means x is going to have to equal 2 plus 1. Replace y with a 2. It's another substitution. So that means x is equal to 3. Now I highly recommend, once you find your answers, put them back in your problem and see if they work. We said x is 3. Okay, so that's 3. We said y is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. If y is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. If I put them over here, y plus 1, well y is 2. 2 plus 1 makes 3. Looks like those legs are congruent. And x is 3, so 3 plus 3 is 6. Looks like those hypotenuses turn out to be congruent. So that's good. All right, the last proof we're going to work through together. There's only one for today. And there's actually, we need to do a little editing because there's a problem, if you notice. It says m is the midpoint of tj. Well, here's t and here's j. In order for m to be the midpoint, they really have to be collinear. m has to be on the same line as t and j and in the middle of it. So this picture is not going to work, which is why I went ahead and whited it out. You can just scribble if you want, scribble that out. Make m to r come up here and then extend m long enough that we could put j right there. Then we can do this and we'll have to tweak these for next year. All right, all of this information, M is the midpoint, that's given to us. By definition of midpoint, what does it mean that M is the midpoint? Hopefully you guys are realizing it means TM has to be congruent to MJ. TM is congruent to MJ by the definition of midpoint. That's what it means when you're a midpoint, you're in the middle. All right, the rest of this, these two at least are right here so that's more information that's given to us a lot of times all the given will go in the first statement but sometimes they'll extend it so what does it mean that we have these perpendiculars it means that angle T and angle M are right angles Perpendicular lines form right angles by definition of perpendicular lines. That means these are right triangles. By definition of a right triangle, if I have a right angle, which I said I do, T is a right angle, and this M, that's really not a good idea to say M, we really need to say PMJ. Remember, we can't just say M because we don't know which angle we mean when we say M. This one, this one, this one. So, sorry, this should be RMJ. P is over here. RMJ is this angle. 
and it's perpendicular right here. So we have a right angle here and a right angle here. That means our two triangles, PTM and RMJ, are right triangles, which by the definition, so if they are right triangles, and if the hypotenuses are congruent, and if we have a pair of legs, here's our hypotenuses, here's our pair of legs, this was our hypotenuses, PM and RJ, those were our hypotenuses. That was given to us. Technically, that should be somewhere in here, so we could put that up here. PM is congruent to RJ as part of the given information. We have a pair of hypot we have the hypotenuses congruent. We have a pair of legs congruent. We have right triangles. That means our triangles are congruent by HL. And hopefully you can get this. What we're trying to prove is TP is congruent to MR. TP is this side is congruent to MR this side. Why are these two sides congruent? Because the triangles are so that's your CPCTC. We got triangles congruent, so that means the corresponding parts must also be congruent. Okay, for this section, go ahead and try number two, five, and ten. Two is making you look back at this problem to come up with an answer. Five is making you solve. And number ten is again making you look at what additional information would you need to say if the triangles are congruent by HL or not. If they are congruent, name them. If they, if the triangles are congruent, I want you to name them. Triangle what is congruent to triangle what? Just so you can get your corresponding parts together. All right, that is it.